everyone, and welcome to a new episode of Surprise Guest with Pia Arcangel, where every episode leads to some sort of unexpected conversation. We never know what we're going to end up talking about dahil uh, it's a free-flowing conversation between our guest and myself. And I'm really excited because today we have a very special guest. And I don't have to guess who our guest for today will be because apparently, siya ang magpapakilala sa sarili niya. So he or she... <laughs> will introduce himself or herself on our screen. So I'm very excited about this. I would love to meet today's special surprise guest. Are you there, surprise guest? Yes, I'm here. Hi, how are you? I'm doing good. Yourself? How about I let you do the honors of introducing yourself to everyone? Um, I'm MB Nell from Stockton, California. Rapper MB Nell. Yeah. It's so great to finally meet you. MB Nell, of course, is a Phil Am rapper and you're here to promote a new album. Yeah, it's mm-hmm. a whole album. It's one finity. That's great. So can you tell us about it? 8 to infinity is just 8. stands for the neighborhood I grew up from, 8th Street. It's basically saying taking it to the star, taking it to the moon, to infinity, starting from the mud, and then uh, turning nothing into something. But um, yeah, I just wanted to explore different sounds with the album, like more poppy sounds, hip-hop, rapping, lyrics, and just mix it all into one project. Are some of the songs on the album written by you? Uh, yeah, all of them are. Oh, wow. So you, you've always written all your songs? Yeah. Okay, and where do you normally draw inspiration from? I'm from life experiences, mostly, most of the time, life experiences. Um, and yeah, that's kind of what my music is deprived of. Just what, what I base everything on, just like my journal. You can mm-hmm. say like a diary. So each album, it's composed of your most personal thoughts and feelings. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so that's so cool. So this is your how manyth album? Um, studio album. This is my third studio album. Mm-hmm. Uh, but as far as projects, I have quite a few projects out already. But as far as professional studio album, this is my third. Is this your first time here in the Philippines? Um, it's my first time as an adult. I've been here when I was 10 years old. But yeah, this is my first time as an adult getting to explore everything and do stuff myself. Well, you said earlier that um, all your music comes from life experiences. Would it be all right to talk about these life experiences? I mean, I know you you have your Filipino roots, but you were born and raised in the U.S., right? Yeah. Can you tell us, uh, MB Nell, about why you decided to become a rapper? Is it something that you had always dreamed of? Or did it just come to you one day and then you realized, this is what I want to do for the rest of my life? It's, I always been into music, but I, it kind of was just unexpected just because I was kind of doing it just for fun. Didn't expect to take it that far until uh, it, it did do numbers and views. And that's when I decided just to keep on going. So how old were you when you first started um, rapping hey, professionally? I've been writing, messing around with rap since I was a teenager, but my first time ever going to a real recording studio, because I didn't know any at the time when I was young, was probably like 17 or something like that, mm-hmm. 18 or something, because I didn't know any studios or anything. W- what was the first song you ever wrote about? Just, just Life Struggles. That was the first song. The subject matter really was just stuff I was going through and just, you know, Streets of Stockton. So, um, what was it like growing up in the U.S., but knowing that your roots are here in the Philippines? I mean, was it a very Filipino household that you grew up in, even if you were in the States? Or would you say that you grew up more American than Filipino? It was a mix of both. I, I grew up in uh, Stockton, California, which and in a neighborhood where, uh, you know, there's a lot going on. But uh, my, as, as for the household, it was very traditional. Both my parents are very traditional Filipino, old school. As as the years go by, really, um, America really uh, molded me mostly to who I am, which is why it was so exciting for me to come back to the motherland and, and get back to my, you know, my roots. Were your parents also born and raised in the U.S. or did they uh, move to the U.S. right before you were born? Uh, they moved to the U.S. right before. Where are they from? That. My mom's from Cebu and my dad's from Sigur, the Visayas. Do you know how to speak Visaya or Filipino? Uh, I used to as a kid, but um, as as I got older, it kind of dwindled down. <laughs> but you can understand a bit. Yeah. Like, daghang salamat. Yeah, yeah, I know that. Yeah. Maayong buntag. Yeah, so if they if they spoke to me in uh, Sahayan, I'd understand it a little bit mm-hmm. enough. Enough, enough to get by. Enough so that they can't fool you, right? Yeah. yeah. 
<laughs> okay, so growing up in Stockton, California, can you tell us what that was like? I mean, were there a lot of Filipinos? Were there a lot of Asian Americans? Uh, what was the neighborhood like? There was a lot of everything. Definitely, Stockton in general definitely has a lot of Filipinos. There's a downtown area that's actually called Little Manila. And yeah, but the, just Stockton in general, there's a lot of Asians, a lot of Filipinos. It's just a, it's just a mix of everything. Did you like have a lot in common with like the people in the neighborhood? Were most of you already born there, or were there a lot who also just moved later on? Um, yeah, for the most part, from thing who I knew already was born there. There was a mm-hmm. few people that kind of came like mm-hmm. later, was, uh, family members like my cousin and whatnot. But other than that, it was really we just really grew up on you know stock and culture. Well, that's very Filipino to be, you know, close to your cousins and seeing them a lot. Do you have, like, any yeah. f- any traits that you would really define as Filipino traits? Uh, being very family-oriented and, um, uh, yeah, just heavy on, on the morality of that. So, so when you say that you're, um, you're very uh, family-oriented, this means, like, you have to have lunch with your parents every Sunday, see them once a week or midweek, is it? Is it like that with you guys? Like yeah, like 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 family parties, family events, everyone. Mm-hmm. It's it's like really everyone just loves getting together just so reasons for the family to get together. Well, it's so great to see that you're here. The last time you were here was when you were ten. So how many years ago was that? Uh that was over that was over ten years ago. It's it's a, been a long, long time. Um I don't know exactly the age. I know it was around that time period though, but yeah, it's it's it's, it's been a Pretty, pretty long time. Would you say that your love for music is something that runs in the family or are you the first artist in the family? I mean, you know, Filipinos, even especially abroad, we have a reputation for, you know, being artistic, you know, and that we like singing and stuff like that. But are you the only one in the family who actually does this? No, so my dad's been into music. Like, um, he's like a, he kind of like DJs for like a cover band, you, you know, so... Uh, Every weekend, they would always just come over in the garage and do music. And I, I guess that's just where it, it, it came from. What kind of music was your dad into? Like the old Tuduko uh, Filipino stuff, like uh, soft rock stuff like that. Oh, okay. So like um, Bon Jovi-ish, like that? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Oh, okay. And the, given that these are the songs you grew up listening to, did they somehow influence your music now? Even if you're doing rap? Even though I I knew he was doing music, I never like like really paid attention too much. But but yeah, as, as I got older, definitely um, like I'm a fan of that music now. Like I listen to all type of music, to be honest. Who are your biggest rap influences? I mean, I remember when when I was in high school, well, th- that was the '90s, and I think maybe that was probably the biggest time for rap. And you know, there were so many rap songs. It was it wasn't something you had to search for. They would just always play it all the time. So. We would be listening to Bone Thugs and Harmony and things and you know stuff like that. Yeah. Who are your biggest rap influences? So it, it's kind of all over the place because I'm 26, so I'm just gonna base it on um, what I was listening to at the time as a, as a teenager. But growing up, and I feel like in my generation was uh, Lil Wayne, Nipsey Hussle, uh, Chief Keef, and a lot of the underground stuff that influenced my specific sound that I grew up on. Oh, so you're only 26. So when so when I say Bone Thugs and Harmony, or if I say MC Hammer, Marky Mark, Eminem, for you that that sounds like really old generation. Yeah, like to be honest, <laughs> like I, I I never really I never really listened to or don't know any too much songs. <laughs> well, you I, know, Eminem it, though I did I do I do know a few Eminem songs that I listened to as a kid, but. Uh, yeah. And here I was thinking I was going to impress you by mentioning Bone Thugs and Harmony <laughs> or Marky Mark. <laughs> but it did not help my case at all. <laughs> so um, at this point, I mean, who are some of the rappers that you want to work with, like internationally? I mean, on the, well, because you're already on the international scene, but who are some of the rappers that you want to work with? There's, there's a lot, honestly. Uh, it, the list can go on, really. But um, I do, I do want to with more um, artists from like specific like like the Philippines for example like I, I do I would love to collab with big Filipino artists and big Filipino American artists like the Bruno Mars and stuff like that like just, just from from little to small just take it more you know internationally with 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 the 
culture. Well, when you um when you told your parents that you wanted to pursue a career in rap or in a career in music, was it an easy conversation to have with them? Because I mean, you know, like here when you tell your parents that you want to pursue a career in the arts, sometimes it's not always easy to get their support. Was it the same for you? I mean, although your dad was already in the music industry, did you have it a little easier then? Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah. Because, you know, when, when, when you have Filipino parents, they come to America, you know, they sacrifice everything you know, to come to America and and it, they want their children to have better lives. So I kind of feel like they're just, ex- they're, they're expecting like a doctor or nurse or something, which was something my mom always kept saying. And then just be like, oh, your son wants to be a, to do music. But yeah, it's working out. <laughs> so, what was her initial reaction when you told her that you wanted to pursue a career in music? She, yeah, no, she didn't like it at first. Mm-hmm. But it was something I never really like talked with her. I never like spoke with them and said I wanted to do it. And I kind of was just doing it anyway. It just happened on its own. Do Do you have siblings? Yeah, yeah, I have one brother. Uh, is he also into music? Uh, he's trying to. Oh, nice! And is he also into rap, or is it a different genre? Yeah, like hip hop. Okay. Do you guys have a song together already? Have you guys collaborated on anything? No, nah, not yet. He hasn't actually recorded too much of anything. I just, you know, I just wanted to mess around. <laughs> and how's it going for him? That was cool. He hasn't really recorded anything yet. Okay. So, but do you do you give him advice like how to go about it, like what what steps to take, practical advice, things like that? Yeah, yeah, for sure. So tell us what you've been up to since you arrived. How many days have you been here already? Uh, I arrived here on the 16th. Mm-hmm. So yeah, just a, just a couple of days. Just been nonstop work. We just uh, we really just been doing press runs, interviews. I was visiting different areas, linking up with different artists out here. Shot some videos. Um, went to a couple slums. The guys were kind of showing me around, and you know, did some fun stuff, shot stuff, and even bought stuff for the kids. Just so uh, you know, cashed out at the vendors and stuff like that. Uh, so who are some of the artists that you met with? Interesting topics and insightful conversations with one of the country's veteran and most award-winning journalists, Howie Severino. The Howie Severino Podcast was hailed as one of Spotify's best new podcasts and has consistently been one of the top Philippine podcasts since its launch. The Howie Severino Podcast. New episode streams every Thursday on major streaming platforms. So tell us what you've been up to since you arrived. It's been nonstop work. We just uh, we really just been doing press runs, interviews. I was visiting different areas, linking up with different artists out here. Uh, so who are some of the artists that you met with? Uh, I met with uh, a guy from Tundo named uh, Third Flow. Uh, okay. Uh, and then Malati, Oastside Mafia. Yeah, I've just been in talks with, and then I've been in contact with a lot of other artists. I've been in uh, Shanti. And uh, yeah, there, there was a lot. There was a lot of artists. I can't even remember everyone's name. I've been speaking to Al James, but yeah, a lot of artists. That's so cool. And what's it like for you getting to meet all the local artists and you know talking about your craft and sharing with each other your different stories? It's been just dope experiencing like the the lifestyle out here, just how different it is from the from the states, and it's just been really really an experience just experiencing that you're actually lucky that you're here january so it's not so warm i mean i know california is yeah. warmer than the rest of the u.s but this is uh, pretty cool weather for us are you enjoying the weather yeah i th- I, th- I think the weather's actually perfect right now yeah, <laughs> okay come back in march tell us what you think <laughs> <laughs> yeah Okay, but um, do you notice a difference between the Filipino crowd and, uh, let's say, the American crowd? Like, when you're performing, is there a difference in the way they react or the way you have to perform in front of them? Yeah, the, uh, how, my personal opinion, how, how it's been based on experience, is, is yeah. Uh, I'm kind of like just uh, but I think that's really a mind state thing. I, I, I think I, I, I just been, like, overthinking it too much when, when I perform in front of different crowds, but... Um, yeah, I, I think so. But you know, you mentioned um big Filipino American artists like Bruno Mars. You know, other Filipino American artists making their names in different genres or different areas. Like, uh, for example, Jokoy. Does this mean that they have sort of paved the way, made it somehow easier for other Filipino Americans in trying to pursue a career abroad? Yeah, yeah, for sure, definitely. Mm-hmm. I definitely think so. 
But do you still face some challenges? Yeah, um, in America, I definitely do. Just because um, as a Filipino, I feel like I'm a minority in the hip hop rap space in, in America. So I'm um, trying to bridge the gap and coming back to the Philippines and seeing how it's a whole different market out here mm-hmm. to touch bases with. Uh, I feel like uh, it's dope to try to bridge that gap to try to get you know, get back with my roots and, and tap in with this market that there's a huge market. I feel like it's just untouched for me because I haven't been exploring it too much. So based on the, the past few days that you've been here, can you imagine yourself coming here to the Philippines more often now? Yeah, definitely. For sure. <laughs> so what have you been loving about your trip so far? Uh, just just the people, how friendly everybody is. Um, and, 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 you know, even though I was going to different slums and, and trenches, around in the Philippines, everyone was just so happy and, you know, full of, full of, full of joy. And, and that was, that was really dope to see. Are you here with family or is it just you? Uh, yeah, it's pretty much just me and the team. I wonder though, um, because of course your music isn't just for release here in the Philippines and when you perform, it's not just here. Are there any, um, stereotypes that you have to downplay or that you have to, you kind of have to challenge or face? While being in America? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I, I think so. It was kind of, you know, certain stuff uh, that I say in music or, you know, I feel like if they didn't come from Stockton or, you know, just Cal- Northern California in general, where Filipino Americans or Asian Americans in general wasn't a common thing in, in the hip hop space, like in different states, it was kind of like a lot of people were questioning just just me as an artist and in and, and hip hop. So, um, you know, being being able to have a, a little bit of light on it now and kind of sharing, hey, this is just where we grew up and came from. That's just how we were raised. And, and that shows in the music. Okay, well, you know, yeah. a lot of artists, they like using their um, whatever medium they choose as a platform for whatever advocacies they might have. Is there anything that you like to promote through your music? Or do you have any particular advocacies? Just like life struggles and and being able to speak about life struggles and allowing it to resonate to young kids who's if not going through the same thing just going through their own struggles and i feel like having someone to uh, uh, listen to talk about vulnerability inspires and you know it's just been being able to motivate is has been a big thing that i i'm very blessed to be able to do so at the age of 26, do you mind telling us um, what has been your biggest struggle so far and how you dealt with it? Um, just growing up in general. Just the how, how the upbringing is in the city I'm from, Stockton. Um, it was labeled one of the worst cities, violent cities in California and like top 10 in the whole U.S. So um, yeah, it definitely impacted me and every kid that came up from, from there. Definitely. So when you say um, about growing up and stuff, you mean like finding your own identity? Yeah, finding my own identity. Um, I didn't know that Stockton was in the list of the most violent cities in the U.S. But how did this impact the way you grew up then? I mean, w- was it easy to just, you know, tell your parents, I'm going out for the night, given, you know, that the, the surroundings weren't always as safe as they, maybe you wanted it to be? Yeah, for sure. But I, I feel like when I was growing up, it was kind of like we kind of got used not used to it, but like we didn't really think none of it. But I was always going outside when I was a kid, even though my mom didn't want me to. So it was something normal for you to just be out with your friends and stuff. Yeah. Did you have a curfew? Nah, but my, <laughs> there was a thing that my mom said where she she wanted she tried to say tell me a time to go home, but when when I didn't, she like lock me out, lock me out <laughs> the house. But yeah, that was that. That's not what. <laughs> Would you say that your parents were very strict with you growing up? Yeah, they tried to. They're like, like I said, they're super old school Filipino. Mm-hmm. Um, and they don't really speak uh, English too well. But yeah, they're very old school. They they were trying to be very strict. But I, I was just a bad kid. Like growing up, just uh, always wanted to go out, go go outside and hang out with friends and stuff like that. So when they would talk to you, they would talk to you in Filipino. Yeah, they'll talk to me in Filipino. Uh, Filipino or Bisaya. Uh, Bisaya. Bisaya. Okay. You knew if they were getting mad at you or <laughs> if they were just saying, oh, it's okay. Go ahead. Do what you want. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They're, they're, they were mad. But, you know, when it gets to a certain point, it's like, oh, go ahead. Do what you want. Huh? <laughs> 
So, have you been to Cebu or Siquijor? Yeah, yeah, when I was a kid, super oh. young. Do you remember what it was like the, the, the beaches? Because Cebu and Siquijor have beautiful beaches. Yeah, uh, I don't remember the beaches I went to in Cebu, but I do remember the beach that I went to in Siquijor because my dad be having videos, Salag uh, Doong or something like that, mm-hmm. where there was like a little clip you could jump off of. But um, yeah, I just remember uh, Siquijor and Cebu being two totally different like lifestyles. Siquijor is more chill, quiet beaches, forests, and stuff like that. And but Cebu. Like my mom lived right in this the city part, like in that like the little alleyways next to all the houses and stuff. Yeah, it was, it was different. Guadalupe to be exact in Cebu. Ah, Guadalupe in Cebu, not in Cebu City. Yeah, Guadalupe. Oh, okay. Did you have a lot of Filipino food in your house growing up? Yeah, every pretty much everything. If it wasn't like um, church's chicken or something like that, or Little Caesar's pizza or something, it was just all Filipino food. And rice, lots of rice. Rice every day, yeah. <laughs> Did your parents try and teach you, um, like you know, Filipino culture and stuff at home? They not necessarily like try to teach me, but more just like it. It just happened, so like it kind of it just was natural for me. Oh no, it, it's it's like but everything else was really normal, like um, just the regular lifestyle at home. I was gonna say that I'm actually kind of looking at the the some of the tats you have on your face, and it kind of looks like by buying. Am I right? Yeah, one of the on one side is yeah. Oh, okay. What does it say? I mean, I know it looks like by buying, but I don't know yeah, what it says like, or means. Uh, faith over fear. Faith over fear. Yeah. Oh, that's nice. And how did you like come across by buying? Um, I had a I had a friend who uh, has a few. Babayan um, stuff tatted, and he's like familiar. He's just super familiar with it. And he's an artist that uh, knows it, so um, he kind of made it for me. Oh, okay. Actually, to be honest, I thought the one around your eye was Babayan. <laughs> I didn't know that you had one on the side. No, this so, so this is my. Uh, I got this a few years back. My this was actually one of my first face tattoos. It was my daughter's name when I found out I was having a daughter. This is her name, Janae, and then a rose right here. Oh, nice. Nice. And the, but the one the, here by your eye, the other eye. Yeah. The double S for uh, South Side from Stockton. Cool. Oh, so you mentioned you have a daughter. Do you get to play yeah. some of your music for her? <laughs> yeah, she's actually, she actually listens to a lot of my music in the car. Uh huh. And, and does, you know, does she, you know, sometimes kids at a very young age, they already have a sense of beat. Does your daughter have that? Yeah, like she's super. Uh, she she loves she loves singing. Like every time we do karaoke, she she wants us to steal the show all the time. <laughs> does she like to grab the mic from you? Yeah. Oh, what does she sing? Yeah, she's trying to. She doesn't have her words all the way there. She's poor, so. Okay. Um, yeah, but she she tries. Well, I'm sure if she grabs the mic from you and um is you know more than willing to perform, then she probably has that um same artistic genes that you have. <laughs> yeah. I suppose like having a daughter so- has somehow been reflected in uh, your music in the in your the songs that you write. Yeah, definitely for sure. Uh, mm-hmm. I actually made a, I even made a song called uh, "Dear Janae," which is a, a song a song made for. Oh, that's really sweet. I- I'm actually very curious. Is it okay if you give me just like maybe one or two lines from the song? Uh, yeah. Uh, a bar was um, praying for the best but expecting the worst, which uh, I broke it down. Was uh, basically saying, because I, I made the song before she was born. Oh. So um, it was kind of, the song was just about uh, ex- like expectations and just, you know, praying for the best and good health. And, and, and that's kind of what that bar meant to me, really. Oh, okay. Oh, that's sweet. That was before she was born. So do you yeah. have like a particular process when it comes to writing your songs? Like do you have to dedicate certain days to writing your music or just when inspiration strikes, then that's when you write the song. It's just when inspiration strikes. Some songs mm-hmm. could take me 30 minutes to write. Other songs could take me like five days to write. So it's, mm-hmm. just, when, it's just whenever. And so when you, do ha- when you do have a song already that you've written, how do you record it or produce it? Do you do it first in like your basement before you bring it to producers? Is there a process to that? I just write and then uh, find a beat. And then I kind of just lay it together just like that. It's just if I like a beat, because usually I'll, I'll 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 have lyrics and then I'll do it to the beat. Sometimes I'll 
finish a song already, but then redo it on a different beat. So that's, it's just really whatever sounds good by the ear sonically. Okay, so are there some songs where it's the beat that comes before the words, or is it always words before the beat when you're writing? Um, it, a mix of both. If I hear a beat, I can automatically tell what type of vibe it should be. And But other times I'll just have stuff. I just want to jot stuff down and then I'll just find a beat afterwards. All right. You know, I saw some of your photos on Instagram and I saw that you were at the Grammys. Is that right? Yeah. How is that going to the Grammys? Yeah. I mean, isn't that like every musician's dream? Yeah, that, that was a really fun experience. Um, just seeing everything on live performances and seeing all the big mainstream artists running into them. Um, yeah, that was fun. That was a really fun experience. Did you get to go with um, other friends or was it an invite just for you? Uh, it was an invite only. It was just my manager. I went with my manager. Oh, that's fun. So I'm curious, what's more fun? The actual Grammys or the after party? Uh, I actually I actually didn't go to the after party because uh, we, were, we were exhausted and starving. We were hungry. <laughs> so a- after oh. after we left, we just went to get food and sweat straight off. Oh, you don't get to eat during the Grammys. Oh, it's the Golden Globes where they serve food. It's it, yeah, because uh, the one I went, it was it was it was at the uh, Crypto Arena in LA. So the oh, food okay. that was available at the at the arena was just like basic stuff like pizza, game food <laughs> for when you watch yeah, the games. <laughs> yeah, game food, but at the arena, hot dog. But you're just so you're all dressed up, and then the food that they have is hot dogs. <laughs> yeah, hot dogs. <laughs> And Bina, I just want to thank you because I know you've had a very busy time these past few days, and but you took time out to join us and be with us for this episode. You know, before we wrap things up, I know you're, you have lots of other things to do. Our, our team prepared a special game. <laughs> a game for you to play, just for me to um, administer. <laughs> I'll be the okay. game master, okay? Let me read the mechanics. It's called Rhyme Time. Okay, it's simple because you're MB Nell and rap is in your blood. Yeah. Okay, I will just give yeah. you some words and you have to come up with a rhyme on the spot. Okay? Yeah, sounds good? Yeah. Oh, but there's a catch. The words are in Filipino. Tell me if you don't know what it means. Uh, I'll help in you Tagal- out. Tagalog? Yeah, in Tagalog. Yes, in yeah, Tagalog. Okay. okay, first word is kababayan. You want me to tell you like what I think it is first? or Do you know what it means? Is that... Like friend or family or something? Yeah, or a uh, same country, fellow citizen. Oh, oh, fellow citizen. Okay. Yeah. So you want me to just say a, a word that rhymes with it? Yes. Uh, you you can you can either English or if you know any Tagalog or Bisaya word that rhymes with it, and if you wanna if you wanna wrap it, up uh, to you. Kabayan, balak bayan. <laughs> oh, nice. You know what balik bayan means? Of course, you know what balik bayan means. I I don't know what it means, but I just know. I always see a Balak Bayan box everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Balak Bayan boxes everywhere. Yes, of course. That means yeah. Pinoy na Pinoy. <laughs> Did you have to fill up a Balak Bayan box when you came home? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> With what? Yeah. I'm curious. Uh, canned goods. <laughs> right? That's canned what goods. everybody likes. Well, yeah. Yeah. And hand me down canned goods. And canned goods. And, uh, and uh, bath soap. <laughs> Yeah. Next word, <laughs> mahal. Mahal is the whole different language. I don't know. Halal. No? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's rhyme. <laughs> How about um, puso? You know what puso is? Heart. Yes. Uh, uh, puto. <laughs> Puto. <laughs> puto at puso, yeah. Uh, How about yeah. Um, Filipino? Filipino. Filipino. Just Filipino? Yeah. Pipino. <laughs> you know what pipino, pipino is? Yeah. No, I don't. Cucumber. <laughs> it oh, means cucumber. It yeah. <laughs> oh, really? Yes. Okay, okay how, how about this? Okay, this will be our last. Um, pag-ibig. Pag-ibig. Oh, yeah, that one's a hard one, too. I don't know. <laughs> what, what, is that, what, is that, what does that mean? Pag-ibig is actually love. Oh, love. Oh, pag-ibig. Yes. I didn't know that. Yeah, puggy yeah, big. Too big. Yeah, too big. <laughs> Thanks for being so game, by the way. This isn't an easy game to do, <laughs> an easy game to play. No, that's pretty hard. <laughs> yeah. Emmy Nell, yeah. uh, why don't you um invite everyone? Try and find your songs, get download your album, tell us where we can find it and listen to it. Tell all our listeners. And if they want to find you on social media, where can they find you? My Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, YouTube, all of it. Just just look up Emmy Nell and it'll pop up. All of us uh, streaming platforms, Spotify, Apple Music, Tidal, Shazam, 
everything. <laughs> All right. Well, MV now, thank you so much again. Thank you. Thank you for um, being so game and being with us today. Um, we wish you all the best and I hope you enjoy the rest of your stay here. Okay. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you guys for having me. Thank you. This surprise was planned by the team of Alan Ebora and Aubrey de los Reyes, edited by Shirley Pagiligan with the amazing people of GMA Integrated News. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Till the next surprise. 